today's video, I'll be um, running the CX Spectrum emulator on um, RetroArch. The ZX Spectrum was a British computer released back in the early 1980s. This was one of the, f I think it was a, like a first generation computer. It used a Zilog C80 CPU running at 3.5 megahertz. It used the NEC D780C1, which was a derivative of a or a licensed copy of a Zilog 80 made by NEC. Came with only 16 kilobytes of RAM. You could upgrade it to 48, or it came with 40, 16 to 48 kilobytes of RAM, which was not a lot of RAM at the time. Well, at the time it was a lot, but today it's not a lot. It had a pretty relatively long life from 1982 to 1992, which had a 10 year lifespan and 5 million units being sold, which made it a pretty successful computer. I guess you had various models from 16 kilobytes, 48 kilobytes, to 180, 128 kilobytes. And the later models, I don't think it had a disk drive. I never had one of these. Um, yeah, they did have different models. The first model did not have a disk drive. CX Spectrum 128K. This one came with a cassette player. Back in the day, back in the early 1980s, um, you had cassette players and computers, but these were notoriously slow when you try to uh, load up games, much slower than um, floppy disk drives. Because uh, you had to rewind the tape to go back, you had to rewind and forward to get to a different, different uh, tracks on the tape, and that, take, that took significantly longer than using a floppy disk drive, which could just... Uh, Use a spinning disk to access files, which was much, much faster. And the one twenty, this version of the one twenty eight came with a three and a half inch uh, floppy disk drive built right into it. And this computer competed with the Commodore sixty four. It also competed against the uh, Amstrad CPC, uh, BBC Mike. Uh, micro and other computers of that day, the Apple II and stuff like that. It was uh, mostly a computer that was built to uh, or developed to uh, teach uh, children how to program. Or more, it was more uh, of a computer to be used as a educational tool. But you did have games for it as well. And there were magazines that was based on the ZX Spectrum, as well as other computers of the time, like the Commodore 64 and Amstrad CPC and Apple II and stuff like that. So let's begin. You don't need any BIOS files for this emulator. Um, there's These are the formats that you can use for running uh, ZX Spectrum programs. The emulator that I will be using is a Fuse emulator on uh, Retro Arc. So these are the uh, formats that you could use. There's no uh, BIOS or firmware files uh, required for this. The only difficulty of setting up this emulator is setting up the controls. And um, I, I will show you how to set it up. Now, as for the games, you could find them here on uh, archive.org. I'll leave the I'll leave this in the video descriptions below, so you can find the games that you want. You can also find them in my abandonware what platforms. You can go to the Spectrum. 
they have a lot of games here. You would have to unzip the game and put it into your games folder. But in um, this uh, website, you don't just get one disc. I'll show you. Type commando. Yes, they don't have it on this website. Other games. Download this. I'm sure, you get the right version. It's not going to work. I downloaded that. But as you can see, when you download it from uh, my abandoned world, they have many different versions of this same game. So make sure you get the right one. Um, this one's a tap file. This one's a Z80 file. And I'll make a folder up. Just make a folder on your computer and put up where you can put all your ZX Spectrum games or ROMs like I, I did here. Put all my games in there. And um, you get them from here, you're just going to get you know, get them in .z80 files, I think. Like that. Okay, so now I'm going to start uh, RetroArch. So I have a folder where I put my games. Arc. What I want to do first is I want to load the core, download the core. Or is Sinclair? This one right here, just get that. Show desktop. Make a playlist called ZX Spectrum. Associated with the emulator. I think it's a fuse emulator. This is where my games are at. Let's get them all in here like that. Highlight it and just dump it right in there. Start retro arc. You want to go to full screen, it's F. Just press F. Um, 
There it is, ZX Spectrum. Let's play 1942. Now, this is a game that I know. A uh, press your hot button and start to get in here. Go to uh, controls. Set port two to um, Saint Clair keyboard. This will enable you to use the keyboard. Uh, port one, retro pad isn't going to work. The most common type of joystick for the spec the ZX Spectrum was the Kempston joystick. So I'm going to select that. Manage map files. Save. Okay. Press scroll lock. So you get the game focus. I'm going to press enter. I'm going to select one because I have a Kempston joystick. Press four. Player one. I uh, should be able to use my joystick to play the game, and I am using my joystick to play the game. Play 1942. Okay, so let me go get out. If you see something like this, you just press select start again. And it's just gone after that, so I'm going to go here, close this. Play another game, let's play Commando. Green, let's see. I didn't save it for some reason. Save it as that. Let me close this and see if that was saved or not. Back, see if that was saved. Okay, now it was saved, so I don't have to do this every time, which would be pretty annoying to do. Okay, I'm going to game focus again, scroll lock, press enter, press J, joystick, select Kempston, press S. There, I think back in the day, they only had one button joystick, so if you want to use a grenade in this game, all you do is you just press down on the fire button to use your grenade, because these uh, early computers had... One button joysticks only, so for the second button, you had to improvise a little bit. This is not bad for a computer that had only access to 48k. Does look pretty crappy by today's standards, but back in the day, this was a game like this was okay, I guess. Get out of here. That's 
pretty much it for this tutorial. But let me try one more game and see if my setting was saved or not. Controller. Okay, it was saved. Good. Game focus. I'm gonna select three. I could use my the public trust. Game pad. Uphold the law. Wow, it even has sound. I didn't know that. It's not bad. That is not bad. Let me get out of here. You could also use user to find keys. What I like to do is I like to use this. I like to use um, W A S D. So uh, right D. Left A, down S, up W, M for fire, M for hold, okay. I'm using the keyboard to play the game. For some reason, when you try to bind it to the arrow keys, it doesn't seem to work good. Or work at all, so... The way I configure the keys is by using, um... Like I said... WASD, kind of like what they use for 3D gaming. So let me get out of here. I think that's it. If you have any questions, you could leave it in the comments section below. All the links will be provided to you in the video description below. And 